Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another pro digital commentary done by Luminous. Today I'm casting No Tie Hunter versus Redefining Madness. Now, you guys see No Tie for quite a bit because I've been casting with Envy a lot, and sometimes we cast his particular games. So you are very familiar with what No Tie does and who they are and whatnot. But Redefining Madness is Cinderin's team. If you guys haven't really following uh, Cinderin's team, they have left MTW. There was some big drama in that area that I don't really want to talk too much about but here's um, uh, empty or sorry here's Cinderin's new team which is comprised of Cinderin, Dutch Freak, Pepsic I'm, I'm not sure who that is, Tulex and Iconoclast so I know four of the five players are pretty well known and uh, if you guys want to follow more about Redefining Madness I'm sure Man, websites like Ghost Gamers and Join Dota would uh, let you know more about that. This replay was specifically recommended by Eternal MV himself. He says, you gotta cast this one because it is absolutely epic. So I am casting this one. I don't even know exactly what this tournament is from. I think it's called Dota Hut. Um, so it's not exactly the biggest known tournament, but hey, it is gonna be a good game. So I'm looking forward to be casting it. I, I think it's from Dota Hut, I'm not sure about that one. In any case here, notice how on the Radium with the first pick and first band, the Bands are on the side, but the picks, let's focus a little bit more about that. Keeper of the Light, Gyrocopter, plus Shadow Demon. Meanwhile, on the Redefining Madness, I think I'm going to call them Madness, because Redefining Madness is a little bit too long. Madness is going to be having Magnus, Life Stealer, and Bane Elemento. So, quickly, let's go over some of the uh, draft and the synergies. So, Life Stealer plus Magnus is such a great combo together. Basically, throughout every single stage of the game, you know, we all know what Empower does, especially for a melee carry like Life Sealer. It really gives them that extra 50% damage. But more importantly, that cleave works so well with that uh, reverse polarity. You just jump that uh, Life Sealer inside the Magnus. He blinks in, he ultimates, everybody's clumped up, he's empowered, and he you just right click, right click, right click. And pretty much everybody's dead. Also, the Bane Elemental is going to be very nice against Gyrocopter. Uh, Gyrocopter is, uh, you know, going to rely on his physical damage, and Infeeble will shut pretty much of that down. Infeeble, one of the best ways to shut down carries in the late game. Uh, with the flip side, though, if you look at what No Tyanders got over uh, Madness, is the fact that Shadow Demon is going to be pretty good in terms of protecting his teammates from spells such as the uh, Fiend's Grip, or protecting teammates from Life Stealer right clicks, or if Life Stealer is getting really out of control, that Demonic Purge is going to be a good way to pierce through the Rage of Life Stealer and then, you know, prevent him to do too much. Uh, I like Blinding Light here as well. Uh, won't have too much effect over Rage, but it's going to be very, very nice against Magnus and actually using it as a movement ability sort of to push people aside uh, and 80% and mischance is no big no big joke uh, for no tie hunter so yeah the first draft first stage of the draft is looking fairly standard I still don't know what the big surprise is Eternal Envy says this is a, this is a game so again I trust trust his word on it and I'm waiting in anticipate anticipation of what the uh, what the uh, remainder of the draft will be. Disruptor and Templar Assassin and Enig uh, Undying, excuse me, is going to be banned out here for No Tie. Meanwhile, Madness is going to be banning out the Syllabare, the Prophet, and something else. They are going quite down uh, in terms of the uh, draft stage, so I'm going to speed it up to 2x speed here. It looks like Phantom Lancer is going to be banned out as well. So you might be thinking, why are they banning Phantom Lancer? Isn't Gyrocopter uh, the carry hero? Uh, most teams actually use Gyrocopter as a carry, but I I think no time uh, frequently use Gyrocopter as a support or even as a solo mid. Envy's been mostly playing him as a support. Sometime we see S4 going mid with Gyrocopter, so uh, you know it won't be surprising if you go both Gyro and Phantom Lancer. And had that big chuckle because we see Bloodseeker being picked up here. And uh, Bloodseekers, if Resocker is watching this game right now, he is going to be jumping in joy because he's a big fan of Bloodseeker. But Bloodseeker is just a horrible hero in the sense that whatever he does, another hero does it better. I think Bloodseeker, in my opinion, is poor man Nightstalker because Nightstalker dives a lot better. He has a better silence. He has a, you know, he's just a better hero overall. But Bloodseeker gives you some very interesting game. One of the more unique things that Bloodseeker does is that he will detect you uh, if you're low HP, like halfway across the map. No other hero actually does that. But obviously in a very high level game, most people don't e even care about, you know, that uh, thirst ability. Most people would recognize that, hey, there is a Bloodseeker on the other side, so let's not keep our HP low. So in that sense, I don't think Bloodseeker is going to do too much in this particular game, especially when you see Outworld Devourer 
being counterpick in a sense against Bloodseeker. If I imagine that Bloodseeker and Outworld Devourer is going to be a 1v1 matchup, Bloodseeker is going to have an extremely, extremely tough time getting last hits. Destroyer does, or I know his name is Devourer, but I'm going to call him Destroyer because that is Obsidian Destroyer. That's his name in Dota 1, and I'll stick to that. Destroyer does a ton of damage. Uh, by sapping away the intelligence. I guess Bloodseeker could actually regen some health by last hit increase, but again, the disruption or assuming the Astro Imprisonment is going to be absolutely insane. And who's actually Bloodseeker going to drop an ultimate on this particular game? game? Bane is going to be a good choice. I guess Destroyer is going to be a good choice as well. But, the, you know, the Imprisonment is going to be making it look actually uh, a joke because you rupture, he gets disrupted. So, what do you actually do? I'm not too sure. So uh, redefining madness or question mark question mark question mark is going to be last picking and enigma, and then of course we do have clockwork being picked up here as well. So S4 is going to be playing clock, so he is going to be going mid. Aki is going to be keep playing the keeper of light. Emerald Bulldog on that blood seeker. We have Eternal Envy going playing the Shadow Demon and uh, Love Kelly, my Valentine, of course. Loda, uh, I guess game is played on Valentine's Day. So late shout out to all the couples out there. Hope you guys enjoy your Valentine. Me on the on the dire side, we have Cinder playing the Life Stealer, yeah, Dutch Freak on that Enigma Iconoclast playing the Bane yeah, Elemental. We have two Lex going mid here with the Devourer or Destroyer. We have Pepexek on the Magnus. So, what? How are you gonna do the Cinder? And you're gonna have a Navi Courier? Okay, well, all right. Looks like everybody's gonna be rushing down the mid lane. This is a path that we don't see many teams take. Uh, but this is a very, very good path considering that, hey, it is the world less travel. And if anybody gets disrupted, they are pretty much dead because they're going to get jumped upon by multiple heroes. Wards can drop down here to stop the level 1 jungling of Enigma. And I do a double Sentry War being dropped down to really shut down the jungling. And uh, that is going to be very, very tough for the Enigma to actually come back, come back against. Unless he gets Sentry War of his own. Cinderin might be a little bit tr trouble. Both teams have no idea how close they are to each other. I guess Dyer might know. It looks like Lifesaver is going to come right in. He does have access into that rage, so he should be okay. With that said, I do believe the team might have got a glance of each other. The Radiant is going to be backing off, unable to get a kill. But they do actually grab Invis Rune, and this Invis Rune will be grabbed without the sight of the Dire. So this could be a very, very big rune. Ooh, Iconic Class. I think he might have actually saw Envy fading into invisibility the invisible does have like a 1.5 second fade time or two second fade time i believe so that ward was plopped down and you might have seen and we'll see if uh we'll see if oh, two legs might okay i guess he doesn't know here we're gonna have a hit into a disruption cog perhaps there's the cog right click here against two legs two legs taking a whole bunch of damage can they actually get the kill that's a question right now the illusion is done body blocking from envy envy down gonna take it to the tower one more hit no envy i think he might have missed one more hit or the anime can animation cancel Whatever it might be though, it's going to force out, oh no south here coming from Devour, so he's going to be removed from the lane for a long long time. Very very good, despite not getting the kill, very good use of that Invis Rune, uh, keeping down Devour. So it's not going to be a Bloodseeker lane, Bloodseeker is going to be going on the bot against Magnus, which I think it's going to be fairly even, I mean Magnus should be able to harass the hell out of Admiral, but he's going to be able to use his Bloodthirst, or yeah Blood Path, but Blood Bath to uh, regen a lot of the HP. Look at S4 just really harassing Tulex in this case. He's going to be that using this cog to push and lane. drain the mana of Devourer. I imagine Devourer is going to be winning the lane, but after that first blood, or first gank attempt, he's going to have a lot more tough time. Envy here is going to perhaps try to actually get that steal on the... Ooh, if, he, he, if he could steal this golem, the rocket! <laughs> nice steal here from Envy! That's pretty big because he's wasting a lot of time. Uh, to even get that kill and then Envy of course getting the XP, but more importantly the gold this early on is absolutely huge. S4 again, he's gonna be trying to last it against Devourer on the mid lane. It's so far, doing a fairly good job. He is leading again thanks to that level 1 gang. Syndra on the top lane here, having a little bit of trouble in terms of farm as well. Does have 5 CS. Uh, again, not this lane, it's not that strong particularly against Life Sealer because Life Sealer could always rage away. But keep in mind that this rocket will actually hit you despite a magical immunity and not. Good here, good job here by Aki in terms of sealing a couple kills. And look at that flat cannon being used early on. Disruption here against Bane Elemental. And there's a couple more right click. There's immediate sleep here. And it looks like Aki's gonna take that sleep away. Cinder is gonna go right on Envy. Envy's gonna eat Malefice as well. Is there Malefice? No, he's just level one. No Malefice just yet, but he's gonna go down regardless here. First blood's gonna get taken by Dutch Free. It looks like uh, Loda's gonna be in a little bit trouble as well. Loda's gonna try to go down.
out here and start salving back up. He's going to use south right now. Illumina get, gets used, but it looks like the Nightmare is actually going to get a kill on Aki as well. Look at this surround, or at least a surround attempt on Aki. Aki losing so much HP. Aki is going to get helped by Cinder. Cinder using the Rocket Barrage. Rocket comes in as well, and looks like he's going to try to use that Flat Cannon range to get that kill. Unfortunately, did not get the kill here on the Life Stealer. Dutch Freak is on the run. Espor does not have boots, but he's naturally faster. There's a battery or so. He could pop his Illusion Rune as well. He does, and looks like Dutch Freak is going to go down. Woo! Just a lot of action early on. One to one rocket. It's gonna get sent. And is he gonna find Cinder? And Cinder. Oh, he barely missed. Just a little bit too short. Would have been a fantastic play if S4 got that kill. So very, very well played by S4 roaming around. And I love the fact that uh, we do see Envy jumping back on the mid lane as well. Knowing that he couldn't actually get back to the fight immediately. Might as well sap a little bit EXP from the mid lane as the clocker was not there. So very, very good roaming. Very, very good rotation coming out from No Tie Hunter. My question is, once this Bloodseeker hits 6, what is he going to do? He's very, very close to it. I imagine he's going to pick up a, a Teleport Squirrel and start assisting to the enemy team. That's the one benefit of a Bloodseeker, is that he's a lot stronger and a lot quicker uh, than a Night Stalker would. He, he reaches level 6 quicker, and he could be immediately a high-impact hero at level 6. You could say he's level, hitting level 6 almost 4 minutes in. That's pretty much insane. But with that said, the Magnus doesn't have too many... Uh, too many denies on him as well. Now the other thing, the, the other option that the Lust Seeker could have is to actually just to get a kill against Magnus. Magnus doesn't have that teleport squirrel just yet. And uh, oh, looks like disruption is going to be right here. Dutch freaking in a little bit of trouble. They need that battery. I so saw immediate Malefice. That ju is just a level 1 Malefice. And S4 is getting, walking into the position for that battery assault. Where is the battery assault? Is he used to Oh, that cog! Wow, what a magical range against that cog. Dutch Freak is going to go down clockwork. Picks up that kill. Devourer, one of the big weakness of Devourer is that he's very easily ganked. But more importantly is that you cannot punish the enemy solo mid from leaving the lane. Let's say if this is a Shadow Fiend for example. Shadow Fiend can easily just push the tower and do a lot of damage against the tier 1 tower on the mid lane. If Julex is leaving. Or excuse me, if S4 is leave the lane. But Devourer doesn't have that capability. And you can say S4, this is the second time he's roamed off the lane. And he's still leading in terms of EXP. Uh, because well, really, Tricks can't take too much advantage of that because his hero is just pretty weak in that instance. Uh, TP Scrooge is going to get picked up by the Bloodseeker. So he's ready to go in terms of getting getting a gank on the mid lane or perhaps on the top lane as well. Teleportation comes back here from Magnus. And if Admiral's paying attention, which I assume he is, uh, he will realize that, well, I have a, a, at least a couple of seconds, about 40 to 50 second window to actually get a kill uh, against Magnus when he doesn't have that teleport. Ammo Bulldog hiding in the fog. I think they perhaps are looking for a gank on the lane here. On the top, though, looks like Aki is going to be in big trouble. And he's going to be dead. A little bit caught up, perhaps trying to seal the creeps. Looks like teleportation is going on the mid lane here. Cookwork is going to... Cookwork? Clockwork is going to go inside here against Tulex. Tulex is going to eat a rupture and he is dead. And this is exactly what I mean about the early game power of the Bloodseeker. Able to teleport in to grab insta kills. And most likely he's going to walk back to the bot lane or maybe uh, farm a little bit on the mid lane. And then uh, once his ultimate is back up, which is only going to have a, what, a 70, 80 second cooldown at level 1, go right back into the gank path. Really need to worry about his mana pool though. Uh, Envy just suicided to neutral to ancient creep to uh, walk back to the base a little bit quicker. Aki back on the top lane here. Doesn't he have boots of speed just yet? A little bit uh, tough top lane here. You can see even he's even putting more point into shock for magic. Looks like the rocket's gonna come right in. Illuminate here as well, but Loda being a little bit caught out and uh, he's gonna get picked off. Meanwhile, we do see Envy teleporting back in. They want to get a couple more kills. They see Dutch Freak. Dutch Freak is gonna be in big trouble. Clockwork's gonna have rocket and cooldown just a couple seconds. There's the uh, Illuminate plus a. Uh, what is this spell called? Soul Catcher. Doing all sorts of damage. Looks like Illusion Rune's gonna get popped. Gonna tank the tower. And they want that Bane. Bane's gonna TP out immediately. Going all the way back to base. Uh, you don't really want to do that TPing back out. The rocket's gonna provide sight and Cinder in big trouble. The Hulk! Oh my god! Cinderin's gonna rage and start fighting here, but Amber Bulldog does have his ultimate. Cinderin most likely is gonna be dead. Where's the rupture? No rupture just yet. He actually could infest into his teammate for a little bit more damage. No, he's not even leveled 6. There's a huge Illuminate and looks like Cinderin in big trouble. He's gonna stand in place and he's gonna eventually gonna die. And looks like Dutch Freak is gonna go down to the rocket barrage of the clockwork as well. 6 to 5 in this early game action pack game. 
between No Tide Hunter and the Redefining Madness. Uh, no Tide's gonna have the slight advantage here, especially being taken down the tower. But here comes Julex. Let's see how many people is gonna punish. The ultimate's gonna get dropped, but he hasn't even got the kill against Loda just yet. Loda just will die. But here comes Dutch Freak. He does not have mana or even the EXP for the Black Hole. Excuse me. Only level 4. Envy's hiding in the trees. So Envy gonna make it out alive. Is he gonna TP back home? I think he should because he's yeah he doesn't have monitor to do anything at this point here. Radiance mid tower. I guess despite the kill being fairly even, uh, exactly even, you see that Loda has two death. Aki's got oh Aki's got two and one. I'm very surprised he's somehow got two kills. But yeah, but the more important thing is that Loda's got two death. That can't be too good for them. But with that said, you can see that how S4 is playing rather beautifully. Two one and three being involved in almost every single kill they have gotten. Ammo Bulldog involved in three kill as well for a Blood Seeker. That's pretty good. Uh, but you can see the early game power of that reverse polarity, trapping down two hero right here and making that team fight not as lopsided as it should have been. Looks like Gyrocopter is gonna teleport on the bot lane to really catch on farm. Despite the two death, he's he's got you know he's got 24 CS and is able to get up to at least threats. As for in position, he does have the invis rune. Ooh, he's he's using that in. Hookshot using the hook. Hookshot's gonna hit right here on Iconic Class. Immediate teleportation. Look at how quick the teleportation is gonna come in. He's gonna pop that in this rune and he should be fine. Uh, at least drew a TP. Uh oh, uh oh. And they could actually follow that uh, battery assault unit and um, perhaps find out where S4 is, but S4 is still in this. I guess S4 did not recognize or did not realize there's gonna be so many hero behind him. It looks like they're gonna try to get a kill on Dutch Freak. Dutch Freak is. Uh, Gonna be working on this camp, but here comes Envy. A single disruption will be able to get them killed. So catcher, no disruption here just yet. The cog is all they need in Death Street. Taking so much damage. S4 is gonna get the kill. Uh oh though. This guy is gonna prevent the bottle from regening. Illuminate's gonna channel trying to take that see, uh, take that big creep. Unfortunately, didn't miss Illuminate. And no tie is actually roaming very, very aggressively. Amor Bulldog does have that level six or excuse me, ultimate back on cooldown. And like I said, once you have the ultimate up. You could be ganking so aggressively. Back in the bot lane though, they want Loda one more time. Oh, they almost had it. They yeah, really just need to skewer in and reverse. And that would have been a kill. Loda recognized he's being ganked. He's like, you know what? I'm going to just go on top again. So Loda going all over the place right now. Maxing a flat cannon, which is something I haven't seen before. Generally, max rocket barrage. Uh, but I guess he's going to be maxing flat cannon and putting more points into stats. And making sure that he's just dealing the physical DPS as opposed to the magical DPS. Looks like the life seal is gonna come right in and open right on Loda. Loda's gonna pop his rocket barrage if Cinderin doesn't care, and it looks like Cinderin perhaps gotta be somewhat careful as well. Back in the mid lane here, it looks like Blustiger has lasted the tower, and I'm not sure what item he's particularly going for, but he has 1400 four, 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 gold saved up right now. Loda's on the run, he's gonna pop the rage and TP back out. Very, very nicely played. Unfortunately, S4 didn't miss that hook. That hook has a fairly long cooldown early game on. So uh, it is actually pretty big that he did miss that hook. Back in the bot lane though, you do see uh, Pepperzik pushing that tower. I do believe this tower is going to be going down, but should be fine. Uh, no time, they're still leading in terms of tower right now. Trulex will have that Tranquil Boots uh, being finished. Tranquil Boots is actually one of my uh, more preferred item on Outward Destroyer. Outward just oh, looks like he's going to be in big, big trouble. There is going to be, oh, looks like an uh, Emerald getting a little bit fogged here by the nighttime. Unfortunately, unable to get off that ultimate. Yeah, going back to the uh, Tranko Boots, one of my favorite items on Destroyer because in terms of the item he normally gets, he actually lacks a lot of HP region. Unless you're going for the mech, then you should be fine. But let's say if you're going for the standard 4 staff into Hex, then you don't have HP region at all and you know, it's very very annoying to buy yourself salves and whatnot. Uh, so Tranko Boots gives you that HP region that you, you absolutely necessarily need. Also, the other cool thing is that when you're activating items like Trango Boots, you have a chance to actually proc your Essence Aura, so which is pretty cool. Not that Outward Destroyer has issue with mana or anything, but getting free proc once in a while isn't bad. So another thing to consider is that if you're playing with the Outward Destroyer or any team, you know, items like Trango Boots might not be bad because it lets you proc, uh, especially when you need mana. Quickly gonna check out how we're doing in terms of the CS here. We do see a Blood Seeker leading the way at 12 minutes in here with 50 CS. Not exactly the best CS of all time, but leading nonetheless. Uh, we do see uh, the Magnus being the next person leading as well as the Clinks, or excuse me, not Clinks, Life Sealer. And uh, the next person is gonna be Destroyer and Loda. 
Not destroyer yeah, and loader. Looks like we do have a rupture being popped off here. And there is gonna be... Oh, he's gonna walk just out of that call down rage. And suddenly Black Hole is gonna completely whiff on nobody. That was absolutely embarrassing. It looks like Eternal Envy might be in a little bit of trouble. Disruption gets dropped off here. Or Astro Imprisonment gets dropped here against S4. S4 might be in a little bit of trouble. He's gonna actually invest into a Creeps. Rocket's gonna get dropped as well. Illuminate gets gonna come in. A lot of spell being missed from here and there. Look at that flag. That flag's... I did not know you could have... What? It's just a question mark. It's not even an image. That is sick. That is pretty sick. Not gonna lie. What about the... Man, these guys don't even have an image. What about the no tie, no tie image? Looks like they're gonna hook right in against Cinderin. Cinderin's gonna start fighting, but here comes huge ultimate from the destroyer. Oh, oh, we do have a silencer. Uh, not the silence against the uh, Magnus. Magnus just dies before he drops his reverse, which is pretty sad. He's gonna be dead for about 23 seconds. Another disruption comes right in, but Cinderin's gonna eat a blast through the face here. Uh, we see a disruption. Oh, that mode's gonna be okay, at least for now. The silencer against Cinderin. Cinderin can't use the spell, and looks like he's gonna go down. A second rocket coming. It's gonna miss again. Rupture's gonna come back down. There's a kill from Ammo. Ammo's gonna get disrupted again, and Loda's gonna come right in. He's gonna get one kill. Go looking for a second kill against Dutch Freak. Oh, Ammo gonna get the kill for Enigma. He's gonna charge right. He's diving. He's diving. There's gonna be silence. Will that be enough? We'll have to wait and see. Meanwhile, Ammo is gonna TP right out against Cinderin. And he is... No, the rocket got the kill. Yes, the rocket got the kill against Enigma. Very, very well done. Look at these early game aggression. They're diving past the tier 2 tower on, what, 14 minutes into the game? That's just absolutely insane. Gonna quickly check out how everybody's doing in terms of the item purchase. S4 is gonna be going for a quick mech after Arcane Boots. He's farming rather well, getting a lot of kills, getting a lot of assists. So he's gonna get that very quickly. Looks like we're gonna have to see a Maelstrom build coming from Cinder. Uh, same thing, a mech build coming from Enigma. A little bit slower than the S4 back in the bit lane though. Cinderin's so gonna be in big trouble. There's gonna be Purge on Cinder and Cinderin silence up as well, so no more rage. Oh, what a miss from S4. S4 could hit the hook from a mile away, but will miss point blank. But regardless, Lone is gonna get picked off very, very far away from his tower and very close to the enemy tower. Not too sure what, uh, did I say Lola? I meant Cinderin. Not too sure what Cinderin was thinking about. The cool thing about the Radiant lineup is that the fact that they're, all of their ultimates are very, very low cooldown. The Hook, the Purge, the Blood Seeker ultimate, very, very low cooldown. Call down as well, so they could be used for gank. And it looks like we are going to see Papachek perhaps a little bit trouble. Um, do they have any way to slow and stop him? No, they don't. That's going to be it's going to be it for that particular chase. Back in the mid lane here, we do see a Blood Seeker back, having that ultimate back up. And uh, once he hits level 11, that cooldown of the ultimate gets a lot, a lot better. It looks like it's going to go right here. Oh, TPL attempt here from two legs, which is the absolutely correct thing to do. But, you know, not when a uh, clockwork is going to be in position. Invis Invis popped up here by S4, and S4 absolutely fine. It's going to drop the rupture. Or excuse me, is he going to drop the reverse polarity? It looks like it's not going to be necessary here. Trying to help his teammate by pushing them away, but Amro's is going to be dead. Amro surviving as long as he could have. Not going to be long enough. So trading kills here for a Blood Seeker for a, uh, for a Destroyer, I think that favors the team with the Blood Seeker, obviously, because Destroyer needs a lot more farm to be effective. Uh, meanwhile, Blood Seeker could, you know, get those farm by killing people. You kill cre neither, n neither hero farms very quickly, but, uh, you know, Blood Seeker could jungle a lot better. Blood Seeker could get kills a lot easier with his Rupture. Envy looking for that push. I think that pull perhaps might have been a little bit too early. Uh, 53 is the most ideal time, and he pu he pulled at 52, and let's see if he's going to miss it. No, he's going to get it perfectly. What am I asking, Amro? Or excuse me, Envy should know his timing, and obviously he does. Looks like they're going to try to set up yet another gank. Maybe smoke right here. Envy sporting the Steins Gate tag, which, by the way, Steins Gate, uh, in my opinion, best anime of 2012. Move over Madoka. As much as I love Madoka, uh, Steins Gate, best anime of 2012. They're going to be uh, walking past this particular Observer Ward. At least the Dyer is getting all these sight advantage, uh, at least right now. Uh, because it's going to be somewhat difficult for Envy to lead the gank here. As I say that, he's going to charge right in. And here we go. Rage is going to be used in to self disrupt here against Cinderin. And uh, here it comes. Where's RP? No RP being dropped just yet. Look at the huge Illuminate damage and the Cog on the high ground. Going to be preventing that uh, downward movement uh, coming here against S4. Man, that level 1 COG already doing a lot of work. I see a lot of clock player players just leave that COG at level 1. Uh, if you max it, you get 6 seconds. Or 8 seconds? 8 seconds, really? I thought it was 6 seconds. Apparently not. 8 seconds of COGs. That is such a long time. And here's the here's the power of maxing a flak cannon. Look at that! 
My god. No I just power treads and drums with freaking Bloodseeker. Um, what's that what's that spell called? Uh, Bloodseeker Silence? Bloodseeker Blood Rage. Max Blood Rage here. Ooh, this is something tower. crazy of a build. They're gonna run into Iconic Class. Iconic Class is gonna be dead. Disruption. There's gonna be a rupture. It's gonna force a TP out here from Outward Devourer. Easy, easy kill. I just wanna say he is not maxing Bloodbath, which is a spell that we normally see Bloodseeker always max. I guess if you think about it, if you could get away without needing to regen HP in the laning stage, because you're mostly getting this for the laning stage, right? I mean, getting a kill in the middle of a team fight and then getting a lot of HP, HP back is very, very nice and all. But if you could get more stats or maxing your other spells, might not be bad. And maxing Blood Rage gives your team meets 120% damage increase. It looks like gonna go right in here against the Magnus. Magnus gonna go right out, dropping a reverse side. Oh my goodness, that call down hits up out. Absolutely nobody. Black Hole's gonna get dropped on two hero. Blinding Blight backing out on Dutch Freak. Actually helping him out a little bit better here. Uh, where's the Purge? Purge going right on Cinder. And Cinder just getting focused by just about everybody. He's gonna turn right back here against Envy. Envy should be fine now. Turning on S4. S4 is fine as well. And Mode Bulldog running back and forth. He's getting such a speed buff because somebody's very, very low in terms of HP. He's looking. Oh, baiting out the rupture, baiting out the rupture. There's a silence. Where's the rupture? There's the rupture here against Cinder. And Cinder is on the run. The rocket's gonna come right in. He's basically losing a lot of HP. He's gonna eat a rocket to the place of blinding light, and he's finally gonna die to that silence. Cinder and just running, running, running because he realized if he doesn't run, he's gonna die to the chasing power of the No Tie team. This game is just absolutely bonkers. I just have to say that four stack pull, the four stack camp. And allow the uh, freaking Loda to kill it without having any items with max blood rage. Something I have not seen before. This is absolutely insane. And with that, he's gonna have lifesteal. Man, Loda had a, not have a good early game. Now look at him leading the chart, and I imagine that he is uh, particularly catching back up in terms of net worth as well. Bloodseeker is still doing a lot better because he's uh, killing a lot of people as well. So, four staff is finished on the Bloodseeker. And uh, everybody else is making very, very standard items. Uh, we do see a face boot on Eternal Envy. And the fact that because they're getting so many kills, the uh, the Urn of Shadow is going to be very, very good as well. Here comes Cinder and trying to defend that tower with the help of the Magnus. Magnus does have the Blink Dagger finish, but 20 seconds off to the Reverse Polarity. And being this is no Tie Hunter, I'm pretty sure they're, they're absolutely certain that they have about 15 more seconds just trying to push out or at least damage this particular tower. Ammo Bulldog on the high ground. Uh, ready to go here. 120 damage per increase here with the flat cannon. This makes completely complete sense why they're maxing flat cannon first because the damage output of uh, Loda is going to be so so high. Here we go. Oh, uh, there's going to be our blink right in here. They're going to skewer back. They're going to skewer Ammo back. We're here and Ammo perhaps in a little bit of trouble. It's going to be silenced here against two legs. Uh, two legs should be fine. The hook works. Going to clock is going to hook right in here against Magnus. Where's the ultimate? Ultimate has been dropped on somebody. I'm not too sure why or on on who. Excuse me. Looks like Aki's going to get a kill. They're going to focus here on Dutch Freak and uh oh uh oh. The rocket's going to hit on Cinder. No rage here. Rage didn't want to use it or maybe one cooldown. I'm not too sure. Another illuminate. Look at these illuminates. Just getting way many kills. Way more kills than should have. They're chasing two legs. Two legs going to get uh, mana drain, but he. Mono Leak, excuse me, he's gonna be fine walking up the high ground. Despite eating RP, they still have gotten a kill. Somehow, Loda was able to survive. I just gotta say though, this strat was such ridiculous, such uh, well thought of using Blood Rage and uh, Flat Cannon. But of course, Blood Rage, earlier when I said he's the poor man, Night Stalker, is that Night Stalker has a silence that not only silences the enemy hero, also applies a mischance. This particular silence is that, well, it will uh, give them more damage. And uh, if you're silencing heroes like Life Stealer, if you're silencing heroes like Destroyer, you gotta be somewhat careful because you don't want them to have a lot of extra damage. 120% extra damage. Man, this has gotta be one of the strongest, like, steroid increase buff spell. Because Empowers 50% and Cleave, this is 120%. If you look at the raw numbers like that, Bloodseeker deserve a special mention in the scene, right? It has to be because, like, who else has that kind of freaking inc insane increase? Uh, hookshot is gonna use to be used to cancel those TP. Uh, he could all he could have also used the cog to push him away to cancel the TP as well. Cinder is gonna get picked off. I think Cinder is getting picked off a little bit too many times. He's really relying on the fact that hey, you know what? I have my uh, rage. I have TP. I could get it out. But no, Tie Hunter is not gonna let you, you know, go home safely like that. 
especially when they have Demonic Purge, as well as uh, the Cogs and, and the Hookshot and whatever else. Look at the farm coming here from Loda. Loda up to about 29, 2900 gold, 3k gold. I wonder where he's going to be going next. Uh, Lothar's Edge might not be a bad item of choice. In fact, it'll be a very, very good item of choice. Aki's been getting a lot of kills. Looks like he's going to pick up a 4 staff as well. And I'm sure a lot of you guys have been asking, what do I think about Bluskier using getting 4 staff? I think it's not a bad item. Uh, 4 staff... I, I personally love 4 staff very, very much so. I think the new 4 staff, the one using the uh, Staff of Wizardry and the Ring of Regen, doesn't benefit Bluskier as much in terms of the raw stats. Obviously, the quarter staff would have uh, benefited Bluskier a lot more. This is the older four staff build. Um, but in terms of using your four staff to push uh, targets away to do more damage with rupture, I, I think it's it's a fine item because it doubles as an offensive item and a very very defensive item. So I don't think it's a bad item in, in that sense. But you are spending around twenty four or twenty three fifty for an item that gives you nothing else, right? So you're making him a very very caster base uh, hero. He's not that good in terms of right click he's not that good in terms of tankiness um, he's just very mobile which is not which is not a bad way to look about it uh, but you know it does have his minuses as well so it looks like they're a little bit slow in terms of, oh there's just another four staff that's three four staffs on the radiant team and it looks like if there's a rupture and three or four four staffs that could be very very bad how how do these guys know they they grouped up here for about 10 15 seconds and then they smoke and immediately after smoke Cinderin's team's gonna back off immediately good very very good map sense and uh i guess it, 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 it is to be expected if the team is missing for such a long time you don't see them coming. S4 is gonna. Oh, oh they do see. Oh, there's a rupture and he's gonna die immediately. Did they use a force staff there as well? Hookshot is gonna go in here against two legs. Two legs gonna dis disrupt himself. There's the silence. Look at that one shot. The courier Loda is doing all sorts of damage. There's another kill being taken up here. And now two legs is running on the right side. That mono league doing all sorts of damage. It's gonna try to TP out. Is he really gonna make it out alive? There's a blind. No, no stuns here. He could have used that cog. As for perhaps forgetting what his hero do, I'm not sure. Wait, I do believe Power Cogs pushes you from TP. I'm, I'm absolutely certain that it does. Maybe it was on cooldown. I'm, I'm gonna give S4 the benefit of the doubt, but could have actually uh, canceled that TP and gotten that kill. But right now they're <laughs> no Titaners taking firm domination, firm control of this particular game. And this rupture plus four staff combo is just <laughs> absolutely hilarious. And here we go. We're gonna see it one more time because that rupture is gonna be cooling down very very soon. The disruption here against. Oh, they're gonna focus him down very very quickly. Lotus gonna get four staff back out. He's gonna have another four staff. There's so many four staff in this particular team. You can see that blood rage is completely on Loda all the freaking time, and he's doing all sorts of damage. I want to see what the actual damage is when he actually gets ruptured. Plus 150, you know, around 250. Right click, right click. Look at this damage. And this is with Enfeeble on top too. My God, this is absolutely insane. Here we go. Emerald Bulldog's gonna run right in. Black Hole drops BKB, but there's gonna be immediate cancel. That Cog gonna oh, Cogdown's gonna be dropped as well. Four staff into disruption here. Sinjin's gonna try to do the right click, but he's getting bounced around. He's gonna die immediately. Where's the RP? RP gonna get dropped, and they can focus on Envy. Envy's gonna die, but there's a mech. It looks like we have have the right click coming here from Loda Luda. Look at doing all sorts of damage again. TP back out here from two legs. Two legs gonna make it out of life here. Emerald Bulldog taking that tower damage and the admiral already dropped out rupture i'm not sure again who he dropped it on but a one for one trade here favoring the no tie hunter team they only lost mv but they picked off cinder and this tower is going to be going down very very quickly drum's going to get popped here but here we go two legs <laughs> look both team is buffing the enemy with things like empower buffing the allies with things like empower blood rage and there's infibo in terms of a negative buff as well Man, this game is just very, very interesting to watch. You see that Bane Elemental is maxing that Enfeeble second, which in my opinion is going to be a very, very good spell to max in this particular game. Not only again are you against a Flat Cannon of Gyrocopter, you're getting a, a Blood Rage Flat Cannon. Blink into... Oh, looks like they're going to focus here. One Force Staff, or are they going to have a second Force Staff? Double Force Staff! Look at that Destroyer, he just died instantly! And that hook shot initiation is just way too strong. The multiple force that making Cinderin's job a lot more difficult as well. And looks like there's a blink here against Aki. Aki's gonna go down as well. Cinderin's still alive, gonna pop that magic wand, getting a lot of mana. And Envy's on the run. Envy also has a force staff. Do we have four? We have five force staff on this team. We have five force staff 
on the Radiant team. My god, so if whoever gets ruptured, that person is like instantly dead. S4 is on the run, he's gonna have 4 staff. He's gonna try to TP out and he's gonna make it out alive. No more stuns to cancel their TP. Jesus, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is, this is, this is a Valentine's gift for me. Because 4 staff is one of my favorite items of the entire game. And seeing 5 of them on the same team. That gives me a very, very warm and fuzzy feeling inside. And of course, you top it off, you have Bloodseeker Rupture to actually do the damage. That's just absolutely hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And the No Tie Hunter, if you guys don't know, is firmly dominating this game. 15,000 15, gold lead, 1,000 EXP. 1,000 or 10,000, sorry. 10,000 experience lead. And I think they're going to just really take this Roshan and charge right in for the Rex. Or they could just charge right in for the Rex right now. Against Cinder and really perhaps uh, under or overestimating his survivability power. Should be very, very careful in terms of where he's farming. Doesn't want to get picked off. Oh, hook shot coming out of nowhere. Of course, this ward is going to see his TB and, oh, gets ruptured. Four staff, four staff. He can't stand four staff, four staff. Cinderin, Cinderin's gonna smile as well because, you know, even though he just died, that's just absolutely hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. Oh man, I can't just imagine the no tie chat going on right now. Big RP and as well pushback. Black hole, where's the black hole? Oh, he's gonna be cooled down for about 11 seconds. S4 is gonna cut his way back out, but here comes Loda. Somebody take a sleep, somebody take a sleep. He's gonna be right clicking. Look at his damage output. He literally has no damage item. Well, he has an Eagle Song right now, but before that, he has no damage item. He's just shredding everybody apart. But it looks like the life stealer is going to be back in a couple of seconds. Unfortunately, RP is down. Black Hole is back up though. But more importantly, Rupture and the Multitude Force Staff is back up. So somebody is going to get ruptured and going to get pushed around. I wonder who that might be. Whoever's going to get show up is going to definitely going to be in trouble. Smoke's going to dodge a rocket. Very nicely done. Looks like they're going to charge right in. Uh oh, uh oh, these guys are smoked up as well. Blink, oh, the skewer is not gonna get envy. There's gonna be a disruption. And I could, I imagine who's gonna get ruptured. There's four staff. He's running, he's running, he's running. Rocket, four staff, four staff him again. Yeah, double four staff, four to kill the black hole. Gonna get immediately canceled. Dutch freak, Dutch freak's gonna be dead instantly. Loda using that blood red. GG's gonna get called. And right now, Lotai doing such a beautiful combo. And there's gonna be a grip against Loda, but Loda very, very tanky with this lifesteal. As well as this drum four staff, multitude four staff. Uh, they're gonna surround two legs. Oh, oh, Loda, Loda, Loda been in a little bit of trouble. Loda's gonna eat one more orb and he's gonna go down. Two legs picking him kill here as this team is chasing Cinder around. There's a disruption right now. And uh, Loda is gonna try to fight his way out. Four staff down on the low ground. Woo! GG is called, and uh, Dyer is uh, gonna jump out of this game. No Tide wins this one spiritually as well as physically and metaphysically because Rupture plus 5 force is good stuff. Rupture? Oh, where's the Rupture? Oh, Rupture? Four staff? Force him again, force him again, he's running. Oh, he made it back. RP's gonna get dropped as well. Envy's gonna get pushed back. There's a blind. Oh, they're gonna get a kill with a huge Illuminate damage as well. And this is a little bit of fountain farming time here. Coming from no type. Force half hour here from Dutch Free. GG gets called as well here by Tulex. He's gonna be the last one to drop it out. And uh, that's gonna <laughs> GG well play. Gets called from both. So I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I sure, I sure did. Man, I sure enjoyed that one. That was a very, very hilarious game. And uh, I just gotta say though, Blood Rage plus Flat Cannon Max, four sack ancients. What's up? No, no damage. Double four staff trying to push each other in into the enemy fountain. Oh, silence, silence. Trying to. Oh, is he gonna kill anybody? Where's the TP? Where's the TP? Who was he trying to TP? Oh. All right. Any case. Hope you guys enjoyed this skill. Uh, enjoy this particular game. And until next time, this is Luminous signing off to you guys.